Welcome to lecture five. In this lecture it's going to be a slightly different format than the other ones. It's not a PowerPoint slide presentation. This is going to be a hands-on so please download the file lecture space 5.pcapng. Open the file and you can follow along with what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you through all the little um, navigational tips and tricks that we use when we do protocol analysis and give you some pointers on how to get through it a little bit easier. So the first thing you need to do is decide why do you have this trace file, what's the goal, what's the point. And in this case this is me surfing around and just pinging something because I want to see how protocols behave. I just want to learn. That's all I want to do. So you can see in this example there's a lot of stuff and we have the typical default display. We have our three pane display, the packet list, the packet bytes, sorry, packet bytes are down here, and packet details in the middle. So list, details, and bytes. On the right hand side you can see you've got this funky bar with these colors. Well because we're not troubleshooting we don't need all this right now. So let's turn some of this off just to make things a little bit better for our eyeballs. So right here there's an icon to turn off the colors and there we go. The second thing we need to do is turn off the packet details and the packet bytes. So view, packet details, click, view, packet bytes, click. There you go. So now we've got a very simple display so things tend to jump out a little bit more at us. Since we surfed, we probably did a DNS lookup. So let's do a filter for DNS, enter. And you can see there's all my DNS packets. Now we've got a query, a query and then two responses. So the question is which belongs with which. Sometimes it's obvious. You can see www.ping.com and down here I see response www.ping.com. Sometimes it's not obvious. So how can we find which belongs with which? So I'm going to pick on this first one. I'm going to right click, conversation filter, and I'm going to choose UDP. So this is going to give me a display filter for two IPs and two port numbers. So it's very specific. And you can see only one comes back. See that? www.bing.com, www.bing.com. So I've got my query, I've got my response. Now make sure that you have view, time display format, second since previously displayed packet. Now, if you haven't touched anything, this should still be the same as before, but just in case, double check that. And down here we want milliseconds, because Microsoft is not that accurate, less than a millisecond. So if that's all correct, you can see here we've got our time. The first one is 000. That's the time between this one and the previous one, which is nothing. So it's zero. So that's our starting point, if you will, or zero out. And now we've got packet number six, 21 milliseconds. So that tells me this query went out, came back within 21 milliseconds. And there you go. Another note about DNS. If you are looking at this, you'll notice there's these really cryptic codes. These are called transaction IDs and we could also filter on that. So if you worked on a network where the IPs had changed or the port numbers had changed because you're either doing some sort of NAT or PAT or load balancing, something like that, or proxies, you might want to filter or try to filter on these transaction IDs. So let's do that. View. I'm going to turn on my packet details. I'm going to just stretch this guy up a little bit. There you go. And if you take a look, you'll see transaction ID. And when I click on that, down below we have a description and we actually have that field name. So Wireshark is like a big old database. It gives everything a field name and therefore we can search on stuff. Now that seemed a little bit obvious earlier because we used the IP address, but now we're digging in deeper. So I want to right click on this guy, apply as filter, and select it. And you get the exact same results because we're filtering on that transaction ID. See that? So now let's clear this, hit the little X here on the end, clear that all out, and now we want to find the HTTP packets. So I'm going to type HTTP, and I want to show you a mistake people make. So I have my HTTP packets. Now you probably want to pick one HTTP command. So I'm going to pick this get over here, packet number 235. All right, so we highlight that guy. I want all of the packets associated with that conversation. So I need to put a better filter on here. I don't see TCP at all in this because my filter was HTTP and that's what Wireshark did. So don't jump straight to HTTP. I encourage you to start at TCP or even IP if you will. But I want to filter now based on the two IP addresses and the two TCP port numbers. So as we've done in our lecture before, we're going to right click conversation filter and TCP. 
So now we can see we have a filter for two IP addresses and two port numbers. And we can now see our TCP information, our SYN, SYN ACK, and ACK. That is called the TCP three-way handshake. I'm going to cover that in more detail in the intermediate class. But that needs to be there at the beginning of every conversation. If you don't see that, you may have started your capture a little bit later and possibly have missed that. So there's a lot of good information in there. Then we see our GET command. And you can see 192.168.0.4, that's me. There's the public IP, that's a server coming back with an acknowledgement saying, hey, I got your get. And then a little later, I get my data. It says not modified. So this is a really good little example to have where you can say, hey, I sent my get packet. 51 milliseconds later, I get a TCP packet from the server or the load balancer or whomever gets in the way. And it says, ah, yeah, yeah, we, we got that. So don't worry about it. We've got the get packet. And then a little bit later, seven milliseconds after that, then I get my response. So we can see 51 plus seven would be 58 milliseconds for that response, which is good to know. So some tools will only measure it up to the first acknowledgement and some will measure it up to here. So that's how Wireshark does it. Down here we can see another get. And this guy comes back immediately and says not modified, 45 milliseconds. And that's how we start to go through the process of baselining. I'm going to clear this out. Now we're going to filter on ping, which is ICMP. And if you weren't quite sure about this, then you could always filter on the IP of whatever you pinged. And that's another way of, of learning what protocols you're using in the background. So you can see a ping request and a ping reply, a ping request and a ping reply. So let's concentrate on these reply packets. And you can see it says 39 milliseconds. That's how long it took for it to come back. 45 milliseconds. Now if I had my actual ping response screen up and I compared it to Wireshark, you will see a slight variation in it because Wireshark is measuring it as it comes into the actual application, right? Then the application itself needs to process the ping and the response and then put it on the screen. In some cases, the differences are very nominal, maybe a millisecond or less than a millisecond. But if you've got a very, very busy system or a server, you might notice three, five millisecond, 10 millisecond response difference between those. So that's something we need to do a lot with Wireshark is measure the reply and then look at what the application measured as the reply to find out what the variance is. And that's our ICMP stuff. One last one. Statistics. Conversations. Now we can see our Ethernet. We can see the IP and TCP and UDP. So this is another way to filter on things. Now let's just take a look at the IP list. So IPv4, there's 26 entries, that's what the 26 means. And I want to sort by packets. So I'm going to click on the packet header, and that's low to high. Click it again, high to low. So I want to pick the busiest one. That's how I'm going to do that. You can also sort by bytes if you'd like, but I'm going to choose packets. Right click, apply as filter, selected both ways, the top one. Done. So now, I'm just going to close this off. You can see that I've got a filter for two IP addresses to find out which are the busiest ones. And this is something you need to do when you do application baselining or even some troubleshooting exercises. The most important question people always ask is who's the busiest one? Who's chewing up the bandwidth? Which application is chatty? Which service is chatty? And that's one technique to find it. So you start with the IP. Then if you get past that and you want even more details you can always go back to statistics conversations TCP same thing we're gonna sort by packets you can see the methodology doesn't really change too much does it and this guy has the most packets 7600 versus 2200 so this is a very chatty little guy so I know the IPs I know the port numbers I know it's port 80 so that's HTTP I'm gonna right click apply selected both ways and now we've got a different trace because now we've got a display filter with an IP, a port number, an IP, and a port number. Just like the conversation filter we did earlier where you right click, we went to conversation and went TCP, it's the same thing. It gives you the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, let's, let's do that right now real quick. One last little exercise. So I've got this guy selected. My packets are 13,000. My display is 7618. So if I right click on him, conversation 
TCP, that displayed value, 7618, should not change. And it did not, see? That's how you learn what Wireshark does. You can pay attention to how it behaves. It's called tool calibration. you got to understand the tool. And then obviously you can use this for baselining. So my suggestion and recommendation to you is now that you've got a few little tips and tricks with Wireshark under your belt, capture some packets, it, just anything, you surfing, checking your mail, anything. Save those trace files. Whenever you got a moment, take a peek at them and then things will start to jump out at you bit by bit. It's better to have a little practice before you run into a problem rather than try to figure out the tool in the middle of a problem. So thanks so much for your time. Have a good day. Bye for now.